Welcome to the Observation Analysis Tool, OAT. This uh, is a part of uh, the FreeVAD plugin, which is uh, a component uh, of uh, QGIS, uh, one of the most uh, used uh, GIS open source platform. And uh, this is the result uh, of uh, an Horizon 2020 project which aims uh, at uh, support uh, the integrated management of the water resource. The license uh, for this tutorial, document and uh, data are uh, all free. We can see that uh, we have a CC BY license uh, Creative Commons for uh, the materials and for the data, the open database license. Of course, uh, any feedback is uh, really appreciated by the development team because uh, it will help us uh, to improve either the tutorial and also the software itself. The aim uh, of this tutorial is uh, to introduce some of the capabilities of this observation analysis tool and uh, to do this uh, exercise, let's say, that we are going to do within the tutorial, you need uh, to have QAGIS installed with the FreeVAT plugin. Welcome to the Observation Analysis Tool, OAT. This uh, is a part of uh, the FreeVAT plugin, which is uh, a component uh, of uh, QGIS, uh, one of the most uh, used uh, GIS open source platform. And uh, this is the result uh, of uh, an Horizon 2020 project which aims at uh, support uh, the integrated management of the water resource. Together with the software, the pl FreeVAT plugin, you should have uh, received uh, a folder named Input Data, which contains a list uh, of uh, files that uh, are going to be used uh, for the execution of this tutorial. The objective of this presentation is uh, twofold. From one side, we want to introduce the observation analysis tool and try to use it. And the other one is uh, uh, guide uh, the user through a series of exercises that uh, can uh, showcase uh, the tool's functionalities. In this uh, presentation, we will look uh, partly at the theory and what is behind the observation analysis tool. And then we will uh, try to use uh, this plugin, adding new sensors, managing the sensor, processing, and then comparing sensors. In short, we can say that uh, time series are uh, very important when you do hydroenvironmental modeling. And they are getting more and more important with increasing establishment of uh, real-time monitoring network and also with uh, real-time forecasting models. OAT can be helpful uh, to analyze, uh, explore, and uh, try to get the maximum out of your observation. In particular, in regards of modeling, they are generally important uh, to support the preparation of the model input data. And also, after the preparation of the model, OAT can support you in calibrate your model. More specifically, on groundwater models, uh, it is very important uh, to use quantitative data to define the physical properties of the aquifers and uh, also to describe its hydrological framework. So, for example, the e water exchange uh, through recharge or discharge. Any model data preparation needs uh, the identification of data needs. 
such as monitoring data and uh, also such as uh, uh, any groundwater related resource uh, information so for example we can have information regarding precipitation water discharge in the river pumping rates at the wells and etc in groundwater modeling these are the main most commonly time series data that you can encounter they are related to the clim climate for example rainfall evaporation evapotranspiration or other recharge and then there are some time series data that relies more on the boundary condition changes so water body stages for example or discharge then there are also time series that describe uh, the water management practice so irrigation or pumping rates and then of course there are other uh, possibilities to have time series data like for example contamination and transport uh, like uh, for example uh, infiltration of uh, contaminant and etc while the development uh, in this phase of the OAT is completed uh, OAT like FreeVAT uh, is an open source project so is continuously upgrading and developing and bug fixing so any feedback as I already stated is very welcome but what is the basic concept that stay behind the OAT library the basic concept is that uh, in general to create this time series you have a sensor which is capable to sensing the environment and then you have observation which are the result of the sensing then of course you have uh, some more information that we call metadata that uh, better describe in detail for example the type of sensor or some particular information on the location of the sensor but these two components are the basis of the time series the sensor that performs the sensing and the data that describe the variation in time of the sensed uh, property in uh, observational analysis tool library this is described by two components one component which is uh, a special GIS layer point-wise that collects some information regarding the sensor location and its metadata and then we have uh, a linked table that collects uh, the time series observation with a number of columns that describe the time at which the observation has been recorded a quality flag we will see later how we can use this quality flag for example the value that has been observed and then uh, a label for this observation this is very important when is going to be used this data together with the mod flow for example and a flag uh, a boolean values that says uh, if you're gonna use or not use this observation in the modeling regarding the sensor location and the metadata we have the name of the sensor which should be unique within uh, your project a description a location a unit of measure a, the observed property a coordinate system that has been used the time zone of the uh, data that is going to be observed the frequency if the series is regular some uh, weight that we can use for uh, compose some statistics and data analysis and then data availability which is basically the interval within we have some observation in the other table this begin position and the end position of the observation The classes that have been used uh, to develop the libraries are very simple. We have uh, a sensor class 
and then we have a method class. The sensor class is capable to describe uh, the two above previously described components, so the spatial location and the data array, let's say. And uh, this observation analysis tool sensor object can be created from uh, different uh, input data. So we can create a new sensor from CSV file, from uh, East source, uh, for example, uh, data server, or also using uh, modflow hub file or modflow gauge file, which is uh, which are output of the modflow models. Once you have created your sensor, this sensor can be stored uh, in a special light database. So you can store uh, your sensor in your uh, uh, project database. Then you can export the sensor, maybe because you want to use uh, in different uh, application, different environments. So you can export uh, like uh, in visual uh, uh, representation with plots, for example, or uh, like CSV file, or uh, like uh, U-code observation file, which can be useful for uh, uh, making calibration and sensitivity analysis. Also, this sensor can uh, take uh, another class, which is named method, which specify a process. So the sensor class can take a method class and apply this method to produce, uh, in general, a new sensor. So when you apply some process to a sensor, you will end up with a new sensor with the processed data which is not overriding your original sensor. This is the basic concept of the libraries that we have developed. OAT is a Python library. And uh, as it is a Python library, you can use it uh, in Python script. The screenshot here below shows uh, the application of the Python libraries within uh, an IPython notebook. Welcome to the Observation Analysis Tool, OAT. This uh, is a part of uh, the FreeVAD plugin, which is uh, a component of uh, QGIS, one of the most uh, used uh, GIS open source platform. And uh, this is the result uh, of uh, an Horizon 2020 PT. You can extract uh, events, uh, you can calculate volumes, you can uh, calculate some hydrological indexes, you can compare uh, to different uh, time series and see the goodness of fit of the tools using some statistical indexes. After the short introduction to the OAT theory and uh, concept of the library, we can start to try to use OAT in practice and see how to apply it within the FreeVAT plugin. To do that, you need uh, to follow the slide step by step. And uh, basically, we need to create a new FreeVAT project. And uh, because that's because uh, OAT save all uh, the created sensor in the FreeVAT uh, model database. And then uh, we need to connect uh, the created uh, FreeVAT uh, database. The preliminary step is uh, to open QJS and then create uh, a new QJS project. You can do it under Project Properties General and set the title like uh, Sensor, for example, and uh, save the project. Now you have uh, your saved uh, sensor.qgs project uh, into your, uh, for example, FreeVAT sensor, and then uh, you can copy the input data folder in the working directory. The second step, uh, preliminary step, uh, is uh, to set up, uh, enable the on-the-fly projection of the coordinate reference system 
so that uh, a floated layer can uh, change uh, on the fly their coordinate system and be reprojected. Now you can start to create uh, a freeVAT model. You can go under uh, freeVAT plugin, uh, model setup and create model and you create a new model. We suggest you to follow the name convention that we use in this tutorial and so we create a model uh, name uh, sensor the working folder is under freeVAT sensor and we selected 32632 as a coordinate system of the model another step is to connect the database so you can press the add special light layer in the side toolbar near the layer panel and then you can click new and select the sensor SQLite database file that you find in the folder and uh, click on connect then close now basically you have created a QJS project and then you have created a FreeVAT model which comes with its own database and now the database is connected with uh, your project so you have the QJS project and the database and now you can start to work if you look at the, at the interface of OAT this is uh, a submenu of FreeVAT plugin and uh, within OAT you find uh, fire fo four main uh, uh, subcomponent add time series, process time series, manage sensor and compare sensor the add time series open an interface where you can select uh, your preferred ways to create uh, a new series a new series means uh, creating a new sensor and adding also the data you can uh, select CSV, is source or raw input data if you want to enter the data manually and then uh, depending on the input option that you select uh, the interface dynamically change to ask you the location of the file or uh, the parame parameters for the connection for the web server or uh, uh, a space to manually end. Now you can start to create uh, a FreeVAT model. You can go under uh, FreeVAT plugin, uh, model setup, and create model. And you create a new model. We suggest you to follow the name convention that we use in this tutorial. And so we create a model uh, name uh, sensor. The working folder is under FreeVAT sensor and we selected 32632 as a coordinate system of the model. Another step is to connect the database. So you can press the Add Special Light layer in the side toolbar near the layer panel. And then you can click New and select the Sensor SQLite database file that you find in the folder. And uh, click on Connect, then Close. As a result for this uh, exercise, we will have the following specification. This is separator of the semicolon, the value of the column number 2, the date of the columns 1, skip row 1, quality column menu 1 to indicate that we don't have any quality column, date format percentage D, percentage M, percentage uppercase E change. Please note that uh, the date format uh, is uh, selected using STRF time format 
which you can see at the strftime.org or uh, you can find already some preformatted uh, options in a drop down menu once you have defined uh, your uh, reading variables you can preview the output so that you can check if your CSV is correctly separated in column and rows if you are happy with the results then you can start uh, to fill in the sensor part uh, of the data so you need to specify a sensor name a location in coordinate system and you can either specify manually if you have uh, the coordinates in uh, latitude longitude or altitude or uh, you can also use uh, the button on the right uh, with uh, a map and the pin on and you can select uh, the location directly on the QGIS uh, map uh, area you can select observer property the unit of measures uh, and etc now you can add the time series so you have uh, defined uh, the specification of your CSV you have defined the specification or the metadata for your sensor and now you can click the apply button and see the actual time series if you're happy with it then you can click on OK and then uh, you will be prompted uh, with information uh, if the information is missing otherwise the sensor will be saved and you have to confirm that if you want to create uh, a new time series uh, using a sensor observation service server which is one of the OGC standard way to collect and distribute observation from monitoring networks you need uh, to apply FreeVAT OAT add time series then uh, from the new interface you need to select is source as uh, an option for input data you need to click on new and enter the following information is source demo as a service name and uh, is source.org is source demo as URL for the service then you need to click save and this will save uh, your connection with the, the database server as a result for this uh, exercise we will have the following specification this is separator of the semicolon the value of the column number two the date of the columns one skip row one quality column menu one to indicate that we don't have any quality column date format percentage d percentage m percentage uppercase e king please note that uh, the date format uh, is uh, selected uh, using strf time format which you can see at the strftime.org or uh, you can find already some preformatted uh, options in a drop down menu preliminary step is uh, to open QJS and then create uh, a new QJS project you can do it under project properties general and set the title like uh, sensor for example to add the time series one you have specified uh, all uh, the all input options uh, that are populated uh, looking uh, at the server you can click uh, on the apply button and uh, as a result uh, you will see a plot that will uh, represent uh, the data that you have selected if the data are ok you can click the ok button and the sensor is saved another option is to add uh, time series using raw data like always you need to open the interface for add time series 
then you need to select row as an input data options and then uh, you will see that uh, you will have uh, a bottom part of the, in the interface that shows uh, the options to add uh, a new row for date, data and quality. Optionally, you can use also the listing file. The listing files uh, allow you to see or display the time series that has been generated by Mothflow. The list file uh, contains uh, volumetric, basic uh, water budget, and then uh, using these options, you can upload uh, the result of your mod flow models and you are able to represent this data as a time series within O8. For example, uh, opening uh, a listing file, you can select uh, one uh, of the statistics, like for example, cumulative values in, in or cumulative values out, uh, and uh, the sensor metadata, of course, needs to be defined by the user, and uh, that's all. This is uh, an example, and uh, for the exercise, we open UFZ test two dot lst file, and then we select uh, as a property to be uploaded UZF recharge the sensor name test, uh, the property observed is the volume, a unit of measure cubic meter per second. Like always, we click on the apply, we see the, uh, the graph, and uh, if we OK, we save it with the OK button. You have to remember that you can select uh, different properties that you can read from a list file but uh, what he allows uh, to create a sensor that is observing only one single observed property. So in the case you want to have different values, you need to create uh, different sensor. Further option is uh, to create time series from head observation you need to open an ob file and uh, this allow to create a time series from simulated values in a location from mod flow head observation output file the head observation file in mod flow contain all the information for the simulated head in time during the different time step for example here we will use uh, hob if you use uh, mod flow with an head observation package uh, you are able to produce an head observation output file and this is very useful uh, for calibration for example unfortunately the observation uh, the head observation file doesn't have uh, integrated uh, the time reference. So in order to do that we need uh, to couple this file together with uh, a discretization file. So if we want to create a time series from an OB file we need to specify the OB file that which contains the simulated uh, values and then we need to specify the discretization file that uh, link uh, each uh, observation in time series. For the example, we will use an uh, hob in file rma.hob, hob name hob1, discretization file rma.dis, hob out file rma.dis, OBH, sensor name simulated head 1, observer property water height, unit of measures meter. As usually, click on the apply to see the plot and OK to save the sensor.
We can also add time series from a gauge file. The gauge file is a mod flow gauge format uh, as time series. So, like for the obser head observation, the gauge file shows the simulation uh, results for streams, lake, and unsaturated uh, zone. And uh, the format can vary greatly. So, so, so to add uh, a time series, uh, an OAT sensor from uh, a gauge file, you need uh, to select the gauge file option from the input data radio button. For the scope of this exercise, we will use a new OSCA site BSFRG and we will put as a starting date 2014-0502. We will use the flow as a property. The sensor name will be Nioska simulated. We input the longitude and latitude, uh, observe the property water discharge and the unit of measure cubic meters. Apply and OK to save. Another uh, option in the menu of the observation analysis tool is uh, the interface for managing the as usually if you are happy with the results, then you can start uh, to fill in the sensor part uh, of the data. So you need to specify a sensor name, a location, a coordinate system, and you can either specify manually. If Here uh, you can uh, change uh, the sensor metadata. You can view and change the data which are contained within a sensor. You can make a copy of a sensor, so replicate the sensor to a new sensor. Export the sensor uh, as a CSV, for example, or display the sensor location in QGIS. For instance, we can select uh, the sensor P Lugano from the sensor drop-down menu, metadata, and the preview are loaded. You can click on edit data. Once you click on edit data, the embedded QJS attribute table will be opened. And now, within this uh, new table opened, you can start editing and changing the values manually or applying uh, uh, filters and uh, also uh, equation to change uh, uh, attributes of the tables. You can use the save as CSV to export uh, the data in a CSV file or uh, you can use uh, the clone button to replicate the sensor or create uh, an exactly identical sensor uh, with a different name. You have also the option to update uh, the data once uh, you have uh, edited some of the metadata that you can see in this slide, for example, or uh, you can have the option to delay the data. With the C, on QGIS uh, button, you can uh, make uh, QGIS uh, zoom in uh, into your uh, sensor uh, location and uh, highlight uh, its uh, um, symbology. The aim of this tutorial is uh, to introduce some of the capabilities of this observation analysis tool and uh, to do this uh, exercise, let's say, that we are going to do within the tutorial, you need uh, to have QGIS installed with the FreeVAC plugin. ...file together with uh, a discretization file. So. If we want to create a time series from a knob file, we need to specify the hub file that which contains the simulated uh, values. And then we need to specify the discretization file that uh, 
link each observation in time series. Under the process time series uh, menu, we can access uh, to the capabilities of OAT to process them. In uh, observation analysis tool library, this is described by two components. One component to the process time series basically apply the method uh, class uh, to the sensor class. The method class uh, is uh, highly updatable and expandable, so in the future is uh, likely that you will see new functions uh, and new processing capabilities. In this tutorial you will see three examples, one related to the elaboration of precipitation data, one related to data from discharge and one related to head observations. The preliminary step is uh, to open QJS and then create uh, a new QJS project. You can do it under Project Properties General and set the title like uh, Sensor for example and uh, save the project. Now you have uh, your saved uh, Sensor.QGS project uh, into your uh, for example for the example, we will use an uh, hob in file rma.hob, hob name hob1, discretization file rma.dis, hob out file rma.obh, sensor name simulated head1, observer property water height, unit of measures meter. We will see now how to fill no data of a time series. So we will select P Lugano as the sensor. We can click on preview and see the plotted data. And then we can uh, select uh, fill as a processing. And uh, then uh, in the input options for the process, select uh, time as uh, filling no data methods a zero as consecutive no data allow. We just need now to click on the execute and we will see the result plotted below. Concatenation. It is interesting to see how the result of a process are is stored in memory and can be used for further processing. Unless you select to save the results uh, or to override the results, the results are stored only in memory for uh, your confirmation and can be used uh, for further processing in chain. In order now to extract uh, hydro events, we can select the hydro events from the process drop down menu and then uh, use. Uh, the following uh, options days prior of the peak one days following the peak one minimum days between peak one minimum value for peak 0 0.5 name of the time series test one click on execute you will see that uh, as a result you will have uh, three different time series one uh, for each event that has been uh, created and uh, individuated. If you click on the save uh, option, 
you will be prompted with the dialog that asks you which one of the created new series you want to save and now you can click all of the three and click save to save all of them now we want to extract some basic statistic uh, from uh, a processor time series so for example we select uh, p lugano test 1 1 as the sensor we can click on the preview and then we can select statistics as the process and uh, statistic can be calculated for uh, data but also for quality indexes if they exist we can check the data box if we want to run uh, the statistics on data only and then we can click on execute the result uh, is uh, a string uh, that uh, contains information about data count, standard deviation, minimum and maximum, median, first and third quartile, values and mean. Concatenation. It is interesting to see how the result uh, of for this example we will import a few new sensors with the shared data in order to use the subtract process and calculate the difference between two discharge measurements along the same river and then uh, we will resample a time series to compare it to the mod flow gauge output. First, we will add a new sensor from CSV following the information input file discharge underscore b semicolon value column one date column zero skip row one date format day month year hour minutes sensor name discharge b longitude latitude observer property water exchange unit of meter cubic meter per second by clicking ok we will save the sensor We will add now a second sensor from uh, ESOS server, so we can uh, select ESOS demo as uh, a connection ESOS server and then connect. Then we can select the V Nyoska sensor, discharge as a per server property and the frequencies as 10 minutes. All the other fields can be left uh, with the default value click apply the metadata is loaded automatically change uh, the fields uh, like this change uh, for sensor name click ok to save this sensor now as you see can see in the picture we have two sensor we have this change a and this change b which are two observations in time of this change along the same river as you can see on the picture on the right, now we have uh, two sensors which have two time series that relates at the same uh, river in two different points. If we subtract the two time series, we are able to detect uh, stream losses, which means aquifer gains, or stream gains, which means aquifer losses. By subtracting the upstream time series with the downstream time series of this charge. To apply it uh, under processing time series, we can select this charge A, A as uh, a sensor. We can preview the data and uh, we can use the subtract uh, process to compare the two time series. Since we have selected uh, the sensor A as a sensor to apply the processing. We need now to select subtract as a process and then discharge B as the second sensor. Clicking execute uh, and then saving the result as a new time series named RVOB. This new time series can be used uh, as the basis for a mod flow river observation. We can compare this with gauge file. So for example, we can use the Nyoska B simulated gauge file 
that comes with the simulation at a daily time step the source time series discharge A and discharge B have a frequency of 10 minutes so we need to resample a time series to change the frequency discharge B and NOSCA B simulator represent the same location they represent the observed discharge B and simulated value NOSCA B simulated so we will resample discharge B to be able to compare the two sensors under the process time series panel select discharge B as a sensor then select resample as the process enter 1D as the frequency which means 1 day and all other fields can be left uh, as default values click on execute and the time series will be resampled now we can save save the result as discharge B 1D the resampled time series will be now compared to the simulated gauge value NOSCA B simulated to visually compare the two time series you can open the compare sensor interface choose discharge B1D and click load sensor then choose NOSCA B simulated and click load sensor and uh, both of the series now have the same frequency as shown relatively poor fit in order to process head observation another step is to connect the database so you can press the add special light layer in the side toolbar near the layer panel and then you can click new and select the sensor SQLite database file that you find in the folder and uh, click on connect if you need any assistance uh, please uh, contact uh, the FreeVAT development team thank you